please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, for the liberty and justice for all. Thank you everyone for being here and those watching on TV. Marriage report, a little longer than normal, but uh, you know, a lot of people say, well, you don't seem to be doing much. Well, this last couple of weeks have been busy. I had to read a proclamation for Arbor Day for St. George and the uh, public school kids. I read a proclamation for National Prayer Day, or National Day of Prayer, excuse me. And I was proud to be a uh, guest speaker at the Sullen Truck Family Appreciation Ceremony to uh, where they were honoring our first responders. It was a very nice program and a big thank you to those that, that did attend and showing their support for our first responders. I just wanted to remind everybody that the tentative date for the Fern uh, Creek Bridge, Highway 19 there by Ford, is June 3rd. It's going to be closed probably for three months, so I anticipate the headaches that that's going to present. Reminder that the My Fest is this coming weekend, so some of your uh, streets downtown will be closed. The other thing, this is National Police Week, and I wish you would join me in honoring your Herman police officers. Yeah. Chief Marlon Walker, Lieutenant Matthew Stratman, Officer Russell Treestort, uh, Dustin Tolke, Melvin Knox, and Alexander Lambert. And just uh, also remember our fallen officer, Detective Sergeant Mason Griffith, and then of course Alan Sullen Truck. Keep him and his family in your prayers. He's got a long road ahead of him. He's progressing, but uh, we don't want to uh, forget Adam and the, uh, everything that they're going through. So please keep them in your prayers. All right, we'll move on. Uh, City Administrator. Okay, um, last month I reported to you that the uh, sales tax revenues were down by 2.5% year to date, but we had a really large May deposit which reflects March receipts. So we had a wonderful March. Um, and so now we are neck and neck with last year uh, within $130. Uh, so I was happy to see that. Um, thinking back, you know, what you just said um, about the officers, um, Tammy Burkerhoff and I were able to join Chief Walker in attendance at the candlelight vigil at the Capitol um, last Friday, where Mason's name was added to the memorial there on the north side of the Capitol. And then there was a service the following day. Chief Walker right now is in Washington, D.C., um, where Mason is being honored on the National Memorial. Um, so his name will be read aloud and added to the National Monument for Fallen Officers. So um, Chief Walker um, and some of the family are up there. Um, last week I was remiss in posting about um, emergency preparedness week was last week. And uh, the emergency manager director, Clyde Zelch, had made a really nice video last year. So I want to share that out again in a few days because that is a really good reminder that every household it needs to be um, prepared for emergencies. Um, by way of reminder, the comprehensive plan, um, our first kickoff meeting with MRPC staff, um, it's just an in-house meeting with city staff, um, and that is Wednesday morning. So we're looking forward to getting that ball rolling. The pool of uh, lifeguards um, start training this week, and opening day is Saturday, May 25th. And as of like about a couple hours ago, um, after you guys vote on it, we should be fully staffed. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of a, a tight one. <laughs> uh, the porch repairs that I've been talking to you about for a while, um, the temporary supports will be installed likely this Thursday. And that is just until we can get a contractor to do the demo and the rebuild that needs to be done. And as the mayor said, uh, my fest, uh, the change this year is that uh, all the activities are on Saturday only, uh, May 18th. Uh, 
Chad Walton reported that they have the full capacity of vendors. They have like 88 vendors or something. Uh, so they've got Schiller Street and um, that second block of East 3rd filled. They will be putting up door hangers to notify business owners and residents that the street will be closed starting Friday at 4 o'clock. But then this year again being different that they will be open on Sunday. The streets will be open. Um, the next board meeting falls on the Memorial Day holiday, so traditionally we move it to that Tuesday. So you all agreed to that, so for the public, uh, our next Board of Aldermen meeting will be Tuesday, May 28th. We also have a budget workshop scheduled this week for Wednesday, May 15th at 7 o'clock p.m. Thank you. Thank you. Public Works Director Report. Uh, the Parks Department has been working on the pool, getting the chemicals balanced out, getting ready to open that. Uh, they've also been doing mowing and weeding, obviously. Uh, lines fields have been under, so we've been trying to work around on that today. They dried up a little bit. Uh, the Street Department has been digging up on Gaithy Street. You guys may have noticed there's some cutouts in the middle of the road where they've put some base rock in and packed it in. That's in anticipation of the asphalt crew. Uh, they were supposed to be here last week. Weather pushed them off. They arrived this week. Uh, they got here, started rolling in equipment today. So hopefully the Sheepers Branch project starts this week, weather permitting, and uh, we'll get those projects rolling. Water, sewer, and gas has been working on moving equipment off of the, the 10th Street portion of the sand plant project. That concrete all got patched in last week, so everything's buttoned up there. The electric department's been removing some trees for the trim grant, uh, a couple dead trees in the parks, uh, some dead ash trees. And then I wanted to mention uh, the tree commission got a trim grant this year, and I don't know the exact number of trees, but I want to say it was somewhere near 30. Uh, 30 trees were planted last week by Mike Roots crew. Uh, if you go up Stark Boulevard, they planted several over there, and then uh, down East 4th and along Gutenberg there. And then the uh, sewer department's been kind of getting things lined out for this upcoming brick shutdown, as Bruce was talking about, and getting water uh, materials together for the Schiller Street job. Question for you. Any updates on our backup generator for your building? I haven't heard anything, but I, I know when he ordered it, he was talking like it was going to be probably close to a year before it came in. So I can touch base with him and, and see yeah. if he's got a... PTA on it. I think he did, oh, and okay. it's down to like eight or ten months. Okay. So hopefully in our next couple year. Yeah. Anybody else have any questions? Thank you, sir. Moving along, public uh, comments. Mr. Abrams. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for this opportunity to address you. Uh, I'm uh, here to speak uh, on behalf of a lot of people in Seafall and perhaps elsewhere in Herman. Uh, you have before you on your agenda to pass um, a slope easement uh, vacation, that is to say uh, a quick claim deed. And this would be for the developers of the Bavarian Hills development, apartments development. I'm here to tell you or to ask you to slow down and uh, listen to what I and others have to say and um, perhaps uh, use the power that you have in either ex uh, accepting to do this or refusing to do this because that's basically the only power you have right now. Once you approve the quick claim deed, uh, you have no power over whether they seek funding from other sources, they sell it, the property to someone else, etc. In the ordinance that you're asked to approve, it says, whereas the Board of Aldermen has determined that executing a quick claim deed and releasing the slope easement would serve a legitimate public purpose and is in the best interest of the citizens of Herman. I question that. Speaking on behalf of 60 or so families of Seatall, we weren't asked our opinion. We're citizens of Herman. 
In fact, we weren't even notified of what was going on. We found out about the issue by happenstance. Somebody looked at a Facebook page. So, had we been consulted, we would have said, one, please don't build in our dams in inundation zone. That's the flood zone, okay, of a dam when it breaks, when it gives. We would have said, don't do it. You could have an earthquake, and we're famous for the New Madrid Fault. We could have a tornado. We could have a once in a century catastrophic weather event in which trees, vegetation, and other debris block our spillway, force the water over uh, the dam, erode the dam's foundation, and lead to it to fail. It's one thing to have an inundation zone in which businesses like Tractor Supply, Berliner Pharmacy, uh, and other businesses are there because they're not open 24-7. But you put two to three hundred people in apartments in that same zone up front, then they could be asleep when that happens. So we're talking about lives of people are possibly at stake. After studying the issue and speaking with an engineer, CETOL residents Lucy English and Heidi Clark, who are both here and both have sent letters to you, they, they concluded some of the planned apartments along, and I'm quoting them, of the Bavarian Hills Drive will be in the direct path of the inundation of uh, even as currently mapped. Other buildings are at risk of collapse as the base of the slope is washed out or saturated, piers, piles, and retaining walls would not likely be enough to mitigate against that danger. Setal native Lyle Fricke, himself an engineer, wrote a letter in which he said, he asked, who will be held responsible if such a catastrophe, catastrophe did occur and these apartments were swept away? I'll come back to Lyle's question. FEMA, Federal Emergency Management Agency, as all the letter writers from CETOL have pointed out, does not recommend, actually recommends against building in any dam inundation zone. Okay? So what does the slope, vacating the slope easement, really mean? On the surface, it sounds like an easy thing. You write a quick claim deed, and you hand over a piece of property, sometimes for money, sometimes for not. Okay? In this case, it doesn't look like there's anything in exchange. The city attorney in the last board meeting, April 22nd, and I'm quoting him verbatim from the YouTube video. He said, we are going to have foundations of buildings close right up to or close to the street or retaining walls that are going to deal with that slope. He goes on to say, and so it's prudent, and so it is prudent for the city to go ahead and release that slope easement. That slope easement is kind of in the way of the retaining walls that are being planned but this is a quick claim deed actually giving them, the developers, the quick claim deed provided that if the development doesn't happen, then the easement will revert back. Now, notice the wording. It struck me the first time I heard it, and I said, I've got to play this back. It's prudent for the city to get out of the way? I thought it was the other way around. I thought it was the developers, it would be prudent for the developers to look at the code book of the city and see that there are all sorts of setbacks to an easement, to a utility easement, to a, um, a slope easement, to all other things. You look at the code book and say, well, yeah, I gotta be 10 feet back. I gotta be that. No, that's prudence, that's prudence. Not that the city prudently has to get out of the way of a development. Okay, let's look at some other things about the slope easement. When you vacate it, what's gonna happen? 
Well, the slope easement, if you looked at the charts, here's Bavarian Road. There's a 10-foot easement, utility easement. All the easements, all the utilities in Herman, from everything from cable to fiber optic, electric, water, sewer, everything, all running that to Setal Estates and Setal Ridge. Okay? And of course, they serve the businesses in Bavarian Hills. That's 10 feet. Then you've got on the original, a 25-foot build is the limit. That is to say, you don't build in that 25-foot zone, 25 zone. Why? Because engineers are planning for the future that they want to widen the road. So that's going to be erased. And we're told that the utility easement itself will be paved over in parts. And that was told to me by the clerk. So, the city, of, the elders of the city, the aldermen, I hope you understand what you're signing away when you sign this, give this up. And then, uh, it's, it's just murky. I, I, I tried to understand it for four weeks now. I can't understand what's going to happen. And then, we're going to go forward with, one, with 124 units, apartment units, of one and two bedroom apartments. Not three bedroom, which would bring young families maybe. One and two bedroom apartments, 124 and 205 parking spaces. Okay? And those are going to be the neighbors to Setal Estates and Setal Ridge. So we're going to have anywhere from 200 to 300 people drop there next to us, underneath our dam, and in a space that's smaller, 11 acres, smaller than Setal Lake, which is 13 acres. Now, the, obviously the developers want to maximize return on investment. I, I understand that. That's capitalism. You invest, you want to get back as much as you want. Uh, okay. How are they going to fill 124 units? Remember, once you sign on this, once you sign off on that quick claim deed, there's nothing to stop the building project. 30 second warning. Well, I'm going to ask your forgiveness for a few more minutes, if you don't mind. <laughs> May I finish, Mayor? Give you a couple more. All right, thank you, sir. So, Mayor Cox in the newspaper the other day, May 1st, said that he wanted citizens of Herman to start looking at state and federal monies. And that citizens include the developers. Well, if I'm a developer of housing, and I look at state and federal monies, what am I looking at? I'm looking at housing subsidies. And that's how I'm going to guarantee, if I were a developer, that's how I would guarantee my return on investment. Okay? So, uh, we have exposure. I, 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 I'll try to go through this fast. Building those apartments raises dramatically the liability exposure of CETOL estates. We have insurance, so our insurance is going to go up, but our exposure is going to go up. Because, God forbid, something terrible happens. We're scared to death that we could all be bankrupt because we won't be able to pay once our uh, insurance uh, maxes out. There will be a burden on the Herman Police Department. I, I don't have time to go into details. Lyle Fricky from sitting in Peoria, Illinois, <laughs> wrote this. And, you know, I did. He said, we're going to have trespassers. We're going to have people coming into our lake. Somebody could drown. All those other problems. We've been calling the, the great men of the Herman Police Department, men and women. And we're going to be burdening them. Okay? So whose best interests are served by doing a quick claim deed today, tonight, for this development? Is this development, does it have to be done? right away? 
I believe, and I ask you, and I beg you, I beg you to put this thing on hold, okay? Convene a forum, a meeting, a commission of Herman residents, of Herman stakeholders, people in CETOL, people out of CETOL, aldermen, police, other public works. Have us come together as stakeholders and determine which way do we want to go. Do we want to be a dormitory for some other project like, just saying, uh, Montgomery Port Authority? Do we want to be their dormitory? They're accumulating 6,000 acres, I'm told, for their project. Or do we want to remain a small, charming, picturesque, tourist-friendly town that attracted, I'm not a tourist, attracted me and my wife from Michigan, people from St. Louis, people from St. Louis, people from Ohio and Kansas City, what else? St. Louis. St. Louis, Australia. Okay. So the point is, we retirees, we don't ask much. We bring our money, we bring our pensions, we bring our social security checks, and we want this charming town to stay charming and small. We don't want to be dealing with trespassers. We don't want to be dealing with people uh, Got your point. breaking into our homes or whatever. I, I don't want to insinuate these are be bad people. They're probably hardworking people. Who knows? But all I want to say is what attracted us here is in danger of being destabilized and washed away. Okay, that's all I'm saying. We need to come together as a town to decide on what it is that makes this place and which direction we want to go in. Okay? All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. If you have questions, comments, I'll, I'll take them. I'd be happy to take them. Thank you. All right, I have several ever, excuse me, several other speaker cards. If you are going to say something different than Mr. Abram, then it's okay to speak. But we have a closed session. We have a long night ahead of us. I don't want to uh, have a, just a repeat of the same thing if you can understand where I'm coming from. So if you want to speak, you have three minutes. <clears throat> so uh, Dennis Boyle. Hi everybody, nice, nice to meet you. Uh, same issue, uh, I'll keep my comments brief. Really it's a question. Uh, I've reacted the same way as the last speaker about the impact on the community, the culture, the functioning, all of that. My question is, 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 is there a medium term, long term sort of planning uh, document, you know, that sort of looks at these issues, not just this issue, but other issues to maintain sort of Herman's uniqueness? That's kind of my question to you. The comprehensive plan, the, yeah. the one we have now is outdated and we're in the process of uh, doing a new one, but uh, yeah, it's I, called I, comprehensive plan. Okay. So we have a planning and zoning plan and the area that is in question is zoned uh, C2, which is the least restrictive of all the zones. And so apartments are uh, allowed there, a Walmart, uh, any kind of box store, any really basically almost anything is allowed in C2. Yeah, okay. Well, that, that's, that's good. Um, I, I also agree with uh, the prior comments that I think it, you know, growth is good. Um, but I agree that it should be discussed fully. They're, the dam breaking aside, right? That's a big one. But uh, as far as uh, our city, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Heidi Clark. I'm sorry, I was doing the same thing. But that's um, what I don't want. I don't want to lie. I'm to sorry. I love you guys. You work for the people. And this is what you took on. And I'm thankful for you, Dolores, for going by the book. Please give us the, the three minutes. It's very short. Um, I have for Mr. Volmer some papers. I know you can. Oh, yes. 
Um, I um, I want to talk about whoops part here the inundation zone. I'm going to say it really quick. Why I live here? Old fashioned, small. You guys go by the old fashioned books. That's why we lived here. Um, I want to read something from the code book. And it's, this is the part of 430020. Uh, and I'm only reading a little piece. So the purpose of this chapter, and this is about rezoning and subzoning, is to regulate the division of land within the city of Herman in order to promote the public health, safety, and general welfare. And I want you to pay attention to the word safety. To protect, this is number one, to protect, provide, and promote the public health, safety, etc. Uh, for the people of Herman again. And number three, to provide for adequate light, air, privacy, to secure safety from fire, flood, or other danger. So if this was a field, I could care less. You can build. Build your apartments. I could care less. I won't like it because it's across from me, because I'm the first house. But it's not a field. We have a valley and a dam, and we know this. Would you, any of you, build a house? Would you build your house with your children underneath the dam? Would you sleep there? Would you feel safe there? That's my question. FEMA, SEMA, DNR, Dam Safety, ORG, everybody say do not and advise against building in an invasion zone. It is a seismic zone, just like Bill said. We are in a seismic zone. That's one another extra safety problem. Ex excavating and blasting, I believe there's always going to be tremors. I think that's a, a safety issue also in the slope. Um, I think you can take this to heart. This is not something funny. I'm not sure you have any planning done for if that breaks. This is a serious business. It's this 51 old dam and I personally would have a hard time sleeping above the dam if I knew someone was sleeping with children under the dam. Just saying. My heart I don't care about lives. This is about lives. Lives are at risk. And I think we should take this very seriously with all that's going on right now, especially with tremors being more. We need to be careful. So this is for you. This is the pursuit. Can I come to the? Yes. Um, this is for you, all the risks with uh, building under a dam. Please do read. I hope you all read my email. I did send it to all of you and hope that you care for us, for the residents of Herman and Seatall. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Lucy English. Hi. Thanks for giving us time to speak to you today. I'm Lucy English. I live on Dogwood Lane. I came today to make a plea for your transparency and for citizen inclusion. I've written two serious concerns about the apartment complex in the city um, that the city approved in Bavarian Hills subdivision the most critical and immediate concern is that of placing housing in the inundation zone of a class one high hazard dam. This is a dam where a breach would cause probable loss of life. That's the definition based on the inundation zone and the buildings in the inundation zone now. You have approved a plan to place residences even closer to the dam. When a citizen raises concerns like this, she expects to hear more than your letter's been received, your concerns are added to the file. Yeah. I also wrote to you with concerns about the volume of low-cost housing stock you've approved for the area. You're all aware that Herman's population is still in decline. You're also aware of 30 or so new rental apartments being created in the yellow building. If there's a plan for Herman to grow in the short or even the medium term, please share that with us so that we're all on the same page. We want to understand this narrative about coming growth. Is it the Port Authority project? If so, that's many years out. Who's going to live in those apartments for the next decade? Meantime, we'll have empty housing stock that ends up being blight, squatting, drug trade, increased crime. We don't want more shootings at Casey's. We need you to tell us how these apartments will fill and who these residents will be that you're willing to place under a high hazard dam. In the absence of information, rumors fly. Rumors like, this will quickly be flipped for Section 8 housing. 
This is housing for illegal immigrants. <coughs> this is a federal money grab related to the left-wing government's scheme to saddle towns with high-density housing and welfare dependent citizens. These are the kinds of things that people talk about when you don't share information so that we know what's really on your minds. If you release the slope easement allowing housing to be built in a high hazard inundation <coughs> zone, we as a neighborhood are going to have to talk about our options. We can't take on this liability. We could dissolve the HOA and give the liability as well as our roads and our lake back to the city. We could see to the county and take our tax dollars as many neighborhoods have done when they have felt that their city hasn't stood up for them. We don't want to do these things. Please stop dismissing us. If you're making good decisions, then agree to public forums to discuss them with us. Connect the dots between declining population on the one hand and your narrative of growth on the other. Explain why FEMA recommendations are being ignored. And please tell us why it's OK to have the decisions on this made represented by a city attorney who is also representing the developers. Thank you for your time. Would you like me to address that last false statement? No, not at this time. We'll let everybody speak. Paul Clark. Oh. I don't want to be redundant. Uh, obviously, I heard from my wife, Karen Brockovich. I mean, Heidi. <laughs> Good job, man. Uh, without being redundant, just <clears throat> I traveled the world. 50 years plus as a musician, recording artist. I've lived in dense zones in third world countries to LA, to New York, to Proust Records in Israel. I mean, I've, I've been around. <clears throat> Moving here three years ago, last month, was such a breath of fresh air. I've made great friends with many people here on the board. I love going to the auction on Thursday nights or Thursday night movie. Corey's been nothing but an angel. So very grateful. Trish, we worked for the church and stuff. The, the Ballers were getting, we have nothing against Steve Ballers, Lisa, Raylene, Susan, we have nothing against people. We're living an incredible time right now in our world. I just want to just address this. This is not a time to have civil war and have disputes. This is what people want us to do, is put us against each other. We are a little town. I moved to a little town. I left a lifestyle of packed in millions of people at a time. I love the smallest room. I love that I get a permit in one day for $39 to be building that afternoon. Yeah. What a blessing. Yeah. <laughs> Where I've lived, I've waited three years to get my plans approved. So I, 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 I love Herman. I'm constantly out touring and telling people I live in a bubble town, this incredible place called Herman, Missouri. I love the people in it. I've mean, built many, many great friendships and relationships. We have nothing against anybody here. And we run nothing but goodwill. You know, but obviously the world's always been pressing in on us. I'm a pastor, I'm a preacher too. I'm, you know, built 17 churches over that 50 year period. My heart is for people. My heart's for people. And I hear all the things about, okay, just a little, little bit of history. I rode down the house in 1991 in Los Angeles in the famous Northwood earthquake. I saw death, I saw mud, I saw a little PTSD about it. So excuse me for turning around. Feel a little sensitive about it, but it's it's not a happy sight. And you can say, "Oh, what happened here? What happened here?" But people in LA said it never happened there either. <clears throat> so the third rules I've been into say it never happened there, but it's happened there. So just thank you so much for your time. Let's stay together. Let's don't get divided. Let's don't let our tongues wag without talking to each other. That's what we, that's a small town is. We talk to each other. I mean, we go to we go play golf together. We talk these issues out. We whatever, you know. We're not enemies. We are American citizens. We want the best for each other. So I thank you all, and uh, pray. I pray for you all. I pray for this city. Yeah. Pray for his leadership. Yeah. Thank you, and the, and the officers. We appreciate you guys big time, man. We've done fundraisers for I'm a chaplain for the PGA Champions Golf Tour. We've done a hundred, you know, rallies for. Great, great night for the police department. Yeah, so thanks okay. so much. Thank you. Thank you. Again, uh,
Cascaden? Oops, Cascade. Cascade, okay. Sorry about the pronunciation. Right. Well, <clears throat> I originally was going to talk about uh, low cost housing and what it brings on and so forth. I'll skip all that because it's already been covered by a few people now. Right. So I'll just add a couple of quick things. Um, I've lived here in Herman now for 19 years, but most of my life I've lived in cities. And I've, I've lived in cities, you know, in, in places near where these low cost housing developments were. In most cases, what they said was right. It, it tends to bring drugs and, you know, a lot of police calls and so forth and so on. So on. But, uh, so, I guess the, the point I might want to add to this is, having lived in cities for most of my life, you'd come to places like Herman for a weekend to get away from it. And I think that's what a lot of people do. And, and I think especially, uh, I, I see when we walk around town some evenings, see a lot of, of groups of ladies coming here for whatever, after a party and so forth. And I think they come here because they feel safe on the streets. And and I feel like if we if we start getting these kinds of problems in the city, we're gonna lose that element that, that comes to the city. They'll find someplace else to go. Because if they get the same thing here that they get in the city, why come here? Why not go someplace else? So I guess that's 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 mainly my comment at the end of what I was going to say because I think this town has a lot of history and uh, it has a, it still has a small town feel and that's kind of what brought us here brought me here too so because my wife and I when we first got married we, we think about moving to Washington but we thought but it's perfect, such a nice small town we'll just stay here so I'll make my comments short that's about it thank you thank you sir Mark Huckers? Hucker, yes. Hucker, okay. Hello. Uh, I look at things a little differently. 25 year retired law enforcement officer and supervisor. I see things a little differently. My wife and I, we drive around town. Just the other day, we were up at St. George. I see what looks like an abandoned, dilapidated apartment building, abandoned <laughs> trailer courts, concrete slabs, <laughs> houses with gutters dropping. I don't know why the city isn't addressing these properties, and if you want to bring in development, steer them there. Why put them in a floodplain? I, I don't get that, number one. I see a lot of ugly properties in town. I hear there's a need for housing. I don't know why they're not being addressed. Um, but I need to talk about potentially increasing the population by 10 to 15 percent in a matter of months. I don't know if our EMS is prepared to handle this. I don't know, is the fire department trained and equipped to handle a three-story blaze, evacuation, rescue? I don't know if they are or not, a volunteer department. You may know, Mayor, I don't know. Uh, it's a lot to take on. Can our police department deal with low-income rental units? Because that's what's gonna happen. I'm not stereotyping, it happens. I've lived it for 25 years. Apartment complexes deteriorate. You get calls for service. Two officer calls, so I don't even know if Herman staffs two officers around the clock, but you're going to have disturbances, domestic violences, things occurring. You're going to need two officers there, now leaving the rest of the city unprotected. And when those people in the apartment decide they need to go do a little midnight shopping, they're going to come into our neighborhood because we're the close neighborhood. You know, apartment complexes bring that kind of thing. Apartment complexes are not the answer for what Herman needs. We need owner-occupied housing. I, I just can't stress that enough that an apartment complex with two to three hundred residents isn't going to be the answer for that piece of property. So, thank you. Thank you for your time. <laughs> County Johnson. I'm Connie Johnson. I think you all know me. Lived in Herman since 1978. Lived in Seatall since 2010. I'm on the Planning and Zoning Committee. We are going to be working with Merrimack Regional Planning Committee. I don't know why the city can't wait for us to get that accomplished. 
to know exactly what Herman needs. I know it's going to take a year or maybe more, but I think that just throwing an apartment complex into a dam inundation zone is not wise. It, to me, it seems like just very reckless and could cause huge amounts of damage to property and people. I am working on the emergency action plan for the Seatall Dam. Probably take me another week or two to get it done. I'm going to give the city a copy, the fire department a copy, the police a copy, anybody else who wants it with all the information that people need if there is an event. I just want you to know that when that day, if there is a catastrophic event, it's less than three minutes to cover tractor supply. It's 15 minutes before it gets to the Missouri River. Keep that in mind. Keep things like Johnstown flood or the Tom Saw flood that happened when these dams broke. I think we need to wait, get our plan done with Merrimack, and go from here. Thank you. Thank you. Ron Grant, maybe? I'll pass. Okay. That ends the uh, citizen comments. Thank you, everyone, for your comments. Uh, at this point, we'll move on. Right. You lost me, I'm sorry. Did you want Dave to address? Oh, you wanted to address what she had asked about you? That's, yeah. fine. That's fine, you can do that at this time. So it's uh, been both sort of inferred and expressed that uh, I'm not in a position to be able to give the city legal advice that's in the city's best interest because uh, I represent the applicants. Um, I just want to state that uh, conflicts of interest are matter specific. Uh, I look at every matter uh, to see if there's a conflict, if, if prior representation. Uh, first of all, there is no current representation whatsoever of the applicant. I'm not providing the applicant any advice or representation regarding getting its plat approved at City Hall, building permits, or anything else having to do with the applicant vis-a-vis -vis the city. Uh, and with respect to any prior representations, per the Supreme Court rules, we need to look back and see if there's anything that we learned in that representation which could be used against that client, actually, uh, or cause a conflict of interest. Uh, I've looked at this. Uh, I would submit I have no conflict. Uh, if I did, uh, I would be sure to tell the city that. Okay. Thank you. Hope that answers that one question. Okay. Uh, we move on to uh, old business. Do we have any old, old business to discuss? Any new business? If not, we'll move to ordinances. And uh, before we start with this uh, ordinance, I think uh, we should have the engineer come up and maybe he can answer some of the questions that you all have. Uh, everybody's been doing their homework on your side and on the uh, construction side, checking with FEMA and everybody else that needs to be checked with. and so. I'm not the person that can answer your questions because I don't know anything about that. But these gentlemen, this is what they do. So I guess I would give the floor to you to try and answer. You heard everybody's I did. concerns. I did. So if uh, you could address that. You I can. will. Elliot That's Reed with Cochrane Engineering. You might uh, turn your volume. No. Nope. Okay. Go ahead. I'll, I'll speak loud. Okay. <laughs> uh, we're representing uh, Steve Ulmer in the, uh, his project. Um, as you stated, tonight we are in front of the board for a plat, dividing a large lot into three lots, and along with that, a slope vacation easement. I think there has been a lot of miscommunication <coughs> and misunderstanding with the project, so hopefully my two minutes here will, will clear that up. With respect to the, to the slope easement along Bavarian Hills, many times 
when streets are constructed, there is a slope <coughs> easement provided for the construction. Nine times out of ten, it is a temporary easement to be used for the physical construction of the road. After the road is complete, the easement goes away. For whatever reason, in this situation, <coughs> it was not temporary. It was a permanent easement, which is why we are requesting the vacation of that easement. Steve still owns the ground underneath it and the ground around it. This is strictly for the vacation of the easement itself along the slope. Um, besides the slope easement, which is along Bavarian Hills on the very highest part of Bavarian Hills, there has been a lot of misunderstanding and miscommunication with respect to the scope of the project. Even though tonight we are talking about a plat and an easement, this is for the construction of a 10 unit apartment building. Five units on the, on the lower side and five units on the top. On the very highest part of Bavarian Hills, the highest part that, that Steve owns. That's the scope of the project that we're doing for the vacation of the slope easement. The slope easement was for the construction of Bavarian Hills and it has nothing to do with Seatall Dam. Nor do the apartments up along Bavarian Hills have anything to do with the dam. We have prepared multiple conceptual plans for Steve showing many different layouts on the property that he owns and he has lots of acres to put ground on, to put apartments on, which as you stated are all zoned for apartments and can be built tomorrow. But that is not the scope of what we are doing. We are doing a 10 unit apartment building. There are no apartments planned in the inundation zone of the dam. There's no blasting, there's no excavating, there's nothing in the floodway that is being constructed that affects the dam whatsoever. In fact, the area that we're talking about, the, the slope easement, is 50 feet in elevation above that area, 50 feet. And next to this area that we're talking about is a 0.7 acre tract that is owned by the city of Herman. And then Seatall. So where we're talking about is not even adjacent to the subdivision. So just for clarity's sake, we're requesting for the vacation of a slope easement that is no longer necessary along the road. Any engineering that will occur for the development of this apartment building is ongoing. Plans are not finished, architectural plans, civil plans are not finished. But anything that we need for the development, we will get permits for. Whether it's the city, the county, FEMA, anywhere else, DNR, we will get those permits. I've had all the residents, many residents, call DNR, who have called me, the core, the core have called me, and I've gone over all of this information with them, and they've all said they are satisfied. Come time for construction drawings, we will get everything that we need to provide for the construction of these 10 units. That, that's all we're doing. And I'm not discounting anything that those residents said, because if I was in their situation, I would have the same concerns, especially given the amount of information that was, that was given. There's not 200 unit apartments, they're not in the floodway, they're not in the floodplain, there's no blasting underneath the dam. So that's the, you know, the black and white of, of the issue here tonight. And I'd be happy to answer any questions you guys have on that. <clears throat> Hunter, Jeff, uh, Travis Hernandez, Archer Elgin Engineering, the city's consulting engineer. Uh, I've worked with LA on this project, and I would concur with what you said. Uh, the fact of the matter, that slope easement was there to protect the city's interest in that slope. Um, the, the quick claim deed has a provision such that uh, the city isn't satisfied with the, uh, with the time frame in terms of developing on that slope or the level of engineering that's going to go into developing that slope so that reverts back to the city. Um, the intention of the slope easement was to protect the hills and not the dam, as Elliot said. I think uh, proper engineering design can uh, accommodate that. Could you address um, the inundation zone? From the map I saw, it shows that it would just barely skirt one tiny corner of an apartment. Um, have you run any kind of <coughs> models or anything um, for there's, that? There's no models to run. Uh, as I said, we're, we're looking at just a, a 10 unit apartment building on Bavarian Hills, the highest part of Bavarian Hills is Steve Holmes. There's, no, there's nothing that I need to look at in the inundation zone that affects any part of the project whatsoever. There's nothing down there for me to look at. So I mean, obviously, 
if anything were to develop there in the future, which I'm not saying it is or it isn't because I have no idea what Steve's going to do in the future, if tractor supply expands, if Walmart comes in, if anything else happens in C2, it will all need to be looked at at that time for all the requirements of FEMA, DNR, and the core. All the above, which is not occurring right now. It's not, so no, I haven't looked at that. There's no reason for me to. Um, another question we've gotten from a number of the residents is about um, the spillway and whether or not that's a protected wetland. Uh, we've called DNR ourselves, but you, do you want to address that? I've done no communication with DNR other than when they call me and ask me about the project. We are at the, the approving a plat and vacating a, a slope easement stage. I don't have sealed construction drawings for permit. I have no building plans. I, I'm not there yet. When we get to that point, if I need a permit from any of those agencies, I will obtain it like I do on every project. We're completely aware of how the wetlands work and that... Um, we deal with it every day. If there's a report that needs to be done, you know what it is and you know where it goes and all and of that. And I'm certain that the Corps and DNR will be fully aware of this project from the start to the finish. Um, okay. So, just if you guys are just going to hang with me in case uh, the board has questions yeah, for you. Certainly. I would like, Corey and I just want to go over with you, let you know that we've, we've taken their concerns seriously and we've done a lot of checking ourselves as well. And so uh, we called um, DNR. Um, Corey, why don't you tell them about the three gentlemen you've spoken to um, at the state? So the first two that I spoke to, the first one actually was Billy Hackett, and he was with the Water Protection Program. And this came up out of the use of the term wetland, because I know that means something specific more than just it being a wet piece of ground. Um, and that's when we, and I actually, I think I talked to you, Elliot, on the phone about this because he just wanted to make sure. He, he said there was nothing preventing anything there, but he wanted to make sure that you guys knew that if more than an acre of land were disturbed, you needed an acre of land disturbance permit, and that if you came near that spillway, um, which may not be the proper term for that um, strip in the middle there, uh, he wanted he wanted to make sure that you guys knew that you had to do that Waters of the United States delineation to determine whether or not you needed a core permit. And you, correct if I recall, yeah, you were aware of all that. I'm aware of, um, like you said, you probably deal with it all day. This was kind of fresh for me, too. For sure. So, um, and then after that, uh, I received a call from Mr. Josh Segreto, who works with Billy Hackett uh, <coughs> in the Water Protection Program. And Mr. Segreto just asked for an update on the situation because he'd been receiving calls from residents and such as well and just wanted to hear, you know, other perspectives on it. And so I just, I mean, you can see my sizable file here. I'm not going to go through that piece by piece. But, um, you know, needless to say, you know, I, I gave I gave a recount of what we've gone through thus far, and then finally I called a Mr. Ryan King, uh, Ryan Stack, sorry, uh, Ryan Stack, Ryan King has been before, but uh, Ryan Stack is with the uh, Dam and Reservoir Safety. He's the director of that, um, and his 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 guidance there was. Pretty well, this is, this is a matter between the developer and the HOA, uh, quite a civil issue. Um, and kind of went over that there is no regulation preventing development or preventing anybody living there in that area, even if it is below a dam. There is no state statute uh, prohibiting that. Um, and he had also been receiving some calls from residents as well. Thanks, Corey. Um, I also called um, Karen McHugh, who is the floodplain manager for the state of Missouri, and she too reinforced that, um, although in maybe in some of the FEMA literature they say they don't maybe advise building below a dam, there is no, uh, there's no law prohibiting it, and, and people do it um, at, uh, on a regular basis. And I think a, a, an important part to a distinction is that it's not, uh, that's not a flood zone at all. It's not anywhere near the flood zone. It's not a special flood hazard zone either. Uh, just because there's an inundation zone if the dam would break, it does not qualify as a special flood hazard zone and that is um, confirmed by Ms. McHugh um, from the Flood Plain Management Office. Um, so that's an important distinction. Um, we also talked to the, um, and I think some of the folks we used it to talk to Clyde Selch, who is the Emergency Management Director for the county. And um, he wasn't aware of all the legalities and ordinances and the zoning and all that. That wasn't, that's not his piece of the puzzle. So he wasn't aware of any of that. Um, but after talking with him for a while, his um, 
only recommendations were that um, you know maybe uh, some sort of siren system uh, be installed um, by the HOA that would be specifically for a dam break, and he even volunteered to um, reprogram his cell phone notification alert system for something very specific for a, a dam break. So for safety reasons, those were you know that's his little niche of all this, and those were um, his suggestions. Um, the last person we called, because we just wanted to check and verify uh, the city's liability, if we have any liability at all. So we get on the phone and call uh, Glenn at Burma, who is the risk management person, who's always very concerned about the city's liability, and he said the city has no liability um, in, in this at all. Again, and it, he keeps talking about how it falls, um, everybody we talked to said it falls between the developer and um, the HOA. Um, because as far as the city here in our business is very an administrative piece of business, um, we don't we don't own the land. It's private property. It's private developer, and it's properly zoned. So we would be hard pressed to uh, not once they check all the boxes, which they have. You know, we're hard pressed not to do a procedural piece of business. Do, uh, any of you have any questions? Great. These gentlemen. Thank you both for your time. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay. We can go ahead and read that ordinance now. Bill number 2024-26 would be an ordinance to approve and authorize the execution of a quick claim deed to release the city of Carbon, Missouri's interest in a slow easement to the Bavarian Hills development. Mrs. Bob, do I have a motion to approve it? I'll move to approve bill number 2024-26. Motion has been made. Do I have a second? No, second. Motion is made and second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Take care. Yes. Next ordinance. Next ordinance is on for second reading, that is bill number 2024-27, an ordinance to approve an agreement between the City of Herman, Missouri and Utility Safety and Design Inc. for Natural Gas Pipeline Engineering Services. This is second reading. Do I have a motion to approve? Move bill number 2024-27, second read. Motion is made. Do I have a second? I'll second. Motion made. Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? So carry. Next for first reading is bill number 2024-28, an ordinance authorizing and directing the mayor and city clerk of the city of Herman, Missouri to approve and execute closed subdivision plat 5. Do I have a motion to approve? To approve the plat. Move to approve bill number 2024-29, first read. Motion's made. Do I have a second? Second. Motion is made and second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? <coughs> so carried. Next is bill number 2024-29 for first reading. An ordinance to rezone lots 77, 79, 81, 83, and 85 West 10th Street in the original town of Herman at 910 Jefferson Street from R1 single family residential to R3 multiple family residential. This is for the uh, factory building. Do I have a motion to approve? I make a motion to approve bill number 2024-29 of the first reading. Motion is made. Do I have a second? Aye. Motion made and second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? So carried. On this next ordinance, we went to Travis. Travis, would you go ahead and address this uh, ordinance on the uh, sewage system revenue bond question? I'm back from the um, previous meeting on the same topic. Uh, last we met, um, Mr. McClaney was here. We talked about bonds and how um, it was advantageous this time to uh, go after money just with um, the way the city can leverage um, their, their bonding power to get maybe some DNR grants and uh, lower um, interest rate loans. So the question, I guess, today is what is the value of the bond amount? And I provided um, the board with uh, some outstanding liabilities of the wastewater system. I'll let Trisha share with you all. I'll be happy to go over that. 
or ask any questions at this time. Why don't you run through that list? Okay, yeah, um, so I had several like, improvements identified. Uh, the first was the ballpark lift station relocation. Um, the city uh, was got in trouble with DNR for uh, shutting that facility off during uh, flooding of uh, Frank Creek uh, related to the Missouri River and high water events. Uh, we went through a, a facility plan for that facility and identified a, a relocation project to get that out of the floodplain elevated up against uh, the Washington Street right away and pumped directly to uh, Gutenberg Lift Station. Uh, it has a price tag of uh, $1,712,832. The next item on the list is a UV system replacement. That is out for the industrial park uh, wastewater treatment facility. Um, so the operators have some difficulty in the current maintenance and operations of existing uh, UV system, so that would replace them with a better unit out there in that facility. Do you know how old they are right now? It would have been uh, Quiet, you back, please. Yes. It would have to, uh, I'm sorry, I got distracted very easy. Um, I think 2012 time frame, I'll say so. Now that has a price tag of $300,000. Uh, the next item is a SCADA system expansion. So your water systems on the SCADA, which is uh, basically the way that uh, city crews can monitor those uh, facilities remotely, get alarming, and also some rudimentary controls. Uh, this would add panels to all the lift stations. Um, to basically update that system to have a uh, better alarming at each of the one of those stations. Travis, yes. sorry. Is this the same system as what we currently have on our natural gas? Uh, I believe so. Your electric system is on the skater, your water system is natural gas. Natural gas doesn't have any connectors yet. Okay, but it's on the it's in the process of it. it would be able to be integrated with that system. Okay. Yeah. So um, that is a price tag of $155,000. Um, the largest price tag here is, and uh, it's very unknown at this point, is uh, to rehabilitate the uh, clay pipe and old brick manholes in your guys' collection system. Uh, you guys have 22 miles of uh, sanitary sewer that's below ground and uh, generally doesn't get uh, visited unless there's problems. It's all um, past its design life. Um, our intention would be to slowly, um, over time, get those pipes either aligned or replace the PVC pipe. Um, just due to this, the large number of the piping within uh, the collection system, it's a very high price tag, and that's $10.8 million. Uh, the next item is a uh, transfer switch modification. So uh, we have the ability to uh, hook up our portable generator to each one of the lift stations uh, during power outages. Uh, there's some uh, improvements that can be made to make that uh, more um, easily operable for the operators. On the same topic, uh, we would propose to provide another backup generator uh, to operate uh, multiple facilities at one time. Uh, currently, we have, I believe, one uh, generator that can be uh, utilized at each one of the uh, lift stations. We would add another generator to that fleet because uh, you guys have multiple uh, lift stations that pump sewage in town. Now, the next item would be uh, related to the uh, wastewater collection system rehabilita rehabilitation project. It would provide for a new uh, closed circuit uh, TV camera and trailer. Uh, the city previously had a very aged uh, unit that was, uh, it was a uh, bear to actually use, it's just so old. Um, this would provide the city with a trailer mounted unit that they could actually go inside the pipe and uh, inspect the lines, which would make us, help us make better decisions on how to spend that $10.8 million. And then finally, um, this is a big unknown. Uh, DNR, you know, the regulations never slow down, they're always coming at you. Um, at some point, the city will be liable for uh, treating ammonia at their wastewater lagoon system. Um, I don't know what that cost is going to be at this point because the regulations are still coming down from DNR. Um, so I just threw a round number um, at that. That's $2.3 million. So um, the driver with that is uh, the muscles in our streams uh, can't process ammonia, and the EPA thinks we need to protect the muscles, and so we have to treat ammonia. Okay, thank you. So, uh, anybody have any other questions for me? Actually, Mr. Mayor, I have one question. The, uh, Travis, I'm sorry, and I don't have the information from the last meeting. The ballpark lift station with the 1.7, we had, I believe it was three different proposals. Which one was that? So, We yeah, have three different options. Um, one was to totally relocate the ballpark lift station up against uh, Washington Street right away, as I indicated. Uh, pump directly to like, Gutenberg, that's 1.7. Uh, 
Um, another was to leave the existing facility there in, uh, in the floodplain and just build a dedicated force main. That was uh, $926,000. And the third is a similar option where we would uh, you keep a facility in the floodplain, but instead of uh, running a force main all the way to Gutenberg Lift Station, we would build gravity sewer um, up to a point where we could uh, just pump over the hill at uh, uh, 6th Street and Ozark and flow via gravity. Um, that was uh, $1 million. Um, looking at these options, uh, $1 million for a dedicated force main was a large investment because we still have an aging uh, pump station there in the floodplain that is inaccessible during uh, periods of high water. So this is the relocation up to Washington District? Yes, sir. So our total is $18 million? <clears throat> yes, sir. So the, and these should be construed as a more of magnitude cost estimates. Uh, not a detail right, cost I understand. Estimate. So uh, my gut tells me that we should go for $20 million, so we got a little cushion. I don't know if that, you know, I, I don't know if that's makes sense to anybody else, but this I'm a frugal man. I don't like to ask people to borrow money, so I don't. So well, I know, but I, what I'm saying is, 18 million. You got estimates of these projects. Something goes wrong, you got to add another million. I, I just think that we should go for 20 million. I don't know how you all feel. So, how is the revolving loan process handled in this situation? Well, we have to have voter-approved bonds in order to be eligible for the state revolving loan fund. Um, and Joey says that all of his clients who have applied for it um, have received it. Um, so, and there are corresponding grants that you can possibly get, but again, you have to have voter-approved bonds. And you said you actually had your eye on one that did not require us to meet that 2% median household um, income. Uh, which is good because then we wouldn't be required to raise our, our rates that high. Correct. So uh, the idea would be if this bond passed, uh, we borrow or go to SRF saying we have the uh, bonding capacity and apply for SRF grant, SRF grant to fund the ballpark low station location. And at the same time, there's a water quality incentive grant which is aimed at improving water quality for high and I and also a, 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 a flood water uh, mitigation projects get some grant monies from that so we could uh, basically lower the impact of you guys' rate payers. So what are those grants? Are they matching grants or are they? Yeah, so. And it's through the wastewater, the state? Yes, ma'am. Uh, so the uh, water quality incentive grant, I believe, is up to $2 million, 50% uh, of the project. Uh, so we have a $1.7 million project, uh, which we could increase that to $2 million in the I&I. Addressing. And the other one, there was two. And so the SRF program is a, a it's a low interest loan. Uh, yeah. It's uh, based on market rate. It's a uh, subsidies subsidies from market rate. But then, with, if you get selected for the SRF loan, you can also apply for the grant. So it'd be uh, two pieces of that funding puzzle. And is that a matching grant or like fifty percent? Or it'd be fifty percent of your match your match your company SRF program. The other thing is, if we go for the $20 million, let's say $20 million for this, and we don't have to spend $20 million. No, I mean, sir, we, I we, we draw it like a bank account. This one project's going to cost $10 million, we take that out, and if we don't borrow, don't use the rest, we don't have to spend it. Right. Correct? Right. <coughs> what, what would be the timeline on, on all of this? Uh, so that's uh, probably too broad a question for uh, tonight's meeting. We'd have to look at impacts to you guys' rate payers. Uh, certainly, we want to get the ballpark left station corrected because you guys are uh, under the uh, the guise of the DNR now. They understand there's a problem out there. So we need to correct that problem. I think so. you meant the paperwork, right? Uh, no, like. Oh, we mean the project. Okay, so, so we get approved for for 18, and. We, we immediately do the ballpark lift station. Does that start like a 30 year clock on that, or, or how does that work? Or the payback? To pay, the payback. The payback. Yes. It's a 30 year? It's, the SRF is 20 year. 20 year, mm -hmm. okay. They can extend it out, but it's probably not recommended. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Realistically, I'd say on these projects, you're looking at decades of Yeah. Uh, so, this isn't going to be a, a fast process. I mean, we passed our last one, what was that, 2010, I think. Uh, and we're just now getting towards the end of it, and it's about 15 years later, and that wasn't near the scale. So, again, just to repeat 
what Joey has been telling us is that um, <coughs> this is the, the cheapest way to get money. We can go out for a, a COP or a lease anytime this board wants without voter approval. <coughs> it's subject to the market rates, which are right now 4.5%. Um, if uh, we go through the um, State Revolving Loan Fund um, with the subsidized rate, he's closing them right now for 1.75. So that is always his pitch, is that um, this is the best way to secure that we're in the best position possible to always get the lowest uh, rate. Um, so like, let's just hypothesize that we take out, uh, let's say we pass 20 million, but we only, that's, you know, we don't want to issue all that money by any means. We maybe we want to uh, actually issue just, uh, we get 20 million approved, but we only issue 5 million, right? So uh, we can do that, and then as we pay that down, um, we can go back and say we, we still have 15 million voter approved bonds. So at that time, we can go, okay, well, what's the SRF doing right now? Is it still really low? Or maybe we go through the USDA, or maybe the market has changed and is lower or something. But we're, oh, with voter approved bonds, we're always putting ourselves in the position to get the lowest possible rate and not subject to just to what the general market is. But we still have 4 million on the books right now. Mm -hmm. on um, bonds that were, that are outstanding, correct? Correct. So if, with this two one million seven hundred, uh, as Travis has said before, it would uh, up the sewer, <coughs> the basic charge from twenty eight dollars to thirty nine thirty four. And I'm just talking about the lift station. I'm just talking about <coughs> the Lions lift station. So that would increase the sewer 1134 per customer. Uh, that would be if you guys were not, that's if you guys go to the bank and borrow that money, that's 1174. If you guys were to get um, an SRF only uh, loan, it'd be uh, $7.80 increase to the uh, 5,000 ga gallon user. I didn't see it on this piece of paper. And if you guys would get the SRF loan in the grant, it'd be $4 increase for the 5,000 gallon, um, gallon user. It was a $4 increase? Yes, ma'am. What's the, what's the likelihood, not just ballpark, of receiving that grant? Uh, yeah, there's, uh, so there's a flood of uh, federal monies uh, available, and um, we're probably in a good position at this point in time to, to get some grant money. Well, that's why Joey was pushing it now. He said the grants are available now, but they will you know, become more competitive and just let the pots go down. So 1134 to just hone on this would be if the city took no action in Obani and went to the bank to borrow the money, then you're the, just pay for that ballpark lift station, your <coughs> 5,000 gallon user would be paying $11.34 additional each month, as opposed to getting the subsidized loan, it'd be $7.80, as opposed to getting that subsidized loan plus a grant, it'd be $4. The only way you guys can get the SRF loan or the grant is to pass some sort of bond with the bond. And um, our, that water and wastewater rate that just came out from the state that they did. I have it in my box here somewhere. But we're below the the average for the state in our in our wastewater rates, um, and we're way below getting the two percent uh, percentage of median household income that they want you to have before they'll give you a lot of these other grants. Um, we were just talking. Yeah, we missed, Jesse we missed and I were, out on the grant. What? Because we missed out on a grant because yeah, of we applied for a grant. And we missed out on it. Um, we were just talking to uh, the city administrators from New Haven and New Florence, and they both were raising their wastewater rate exceptionally high. Uh, yeah, substantially. substantially. Thank you. And they're they're <laughs> kind of in the same boat. Everybody's you know running on 70, 80 plus year infrastructure, and I mean if you're New Florence probably doesn't have the same issues that Herman and New Haven have, but if you're in these low lying areas and you have vitrified clay pipe with you know. A, a, Three quarters of a century's worth of tree roots and, and gravity and crushing it, you know, power on those pipes, you're you're gonna have I and I, and that's what we have, a bunch of. So uh, everybody's kind of fighting the same problem right now as far as these older towns uh, that haven't been staying ahead of this. And like I say that that two percent uh, it's on five thousand gallons, I think you gotta be two percent of median household income to even qualify for a lot of these state grants. Uh, and we're not we're not there. So if we don't get there, 
uh, which as Travis was saying here, if we if we were to pass the bond and get the grant, we wouldn't even have to be, I don't think that even puts us at two percent. But if we don't either do that or get to the two percent, we will not be getting grant funds. You're talking about two percent on what? Where? Median household income. So if they want the the state wants your I believe it was a state grant. It was either state or federal, but I think it was state. Uh, they want your your rate on 5,000 gallons a month to be 2% of median household income for your community before you qualify for these grants. The way the state looks at it is um, they, uh, in their minds, that your rate payers can pay up to 2% of the community's median household income prior to um, the state kicking in their money on a lot of these grant programs. Uh, there's some exceptions like I, um, I just alluded to by the water quality and so grants. 2% has always been a historical uh, benchmark for uh, affordability in houses. So where are we at now, do we know? They're at uh, 1.16. 1. 1. <coughs> um, so the census has been weird. Uh, that was based on 2022 uh, community survey data. And obviously the ballpark lift station would get us nowhere near two, but if we were to do some of these other, would that get us closer to two or? Yeah. So two is a number we need to be thinking about, but there's other things we can understand. Correct. Well, and ideally, you know, if the bond issue were to pass and we could run with a lot of this grant money, we don't get to two and we don't need to. We don't to want to be a two. Yeah. I mean, we if, don't if want we can run on these other grants, uh, that's, that's ideal. Uh, there's just a lot of the grants that we won't qualify for <coughs> other ones. And if you're getting grants, you're going to not go closer to two. But I think the question with this particular bill is, you know, do we do, or do we want to pursue bonds? I think everyone on this board says yes, correct? <coughs> I don't want to go into private. It just eliminates us from so much other monies that we could be eligible for. All right, anybody have any more questions? Yeah, I do. I have one more. Sorry. But um, what would happen if we would go for 15 million instead of the 20? I, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that option. But you're anticipating 18 million. Why would you only go for 15? That, that is totally subjective. Do you, but you have a lot of unknowns here. That's why, that's why I said I think we should go for 20 because of the unknown. I, I think in the, on the ballot, 15 might look a little easier. We're, we're raising our gas off. rates, we're raising our sewer rates, we're going to raise our electric rates, and I just have a problem with how much can our citizens really handle. How can, how well, the bond issue is not going to cost the citizens, basically. We'll be raising, yes, we have to raise the sewer rates. Um, so, so what will really affect the rates is how much of that, so no matter how much we approve, 15 or 20, um, whatever that first issue is, is what you guys have to decide, come back and say, okay, how, many, how much do you want to issue on the first go-round? Do you want to issue 5 million? Do you want to issue 10 million? How many of these projects do you want to do um, in one bond issuing? Um, that's a, kind of a way you could probably parse out um, how often, how high the rates go up is by how many of the voted bonds we actually issue at a time. Well, like I'm saying, if you have the 20 million, you don't have to use the 20 yeah, million. Yeah, we don't have to use it, that's for sure. It's just the national for a limit. Yes. You don't have to use 15 million either, by the way. Okay. So we don't tie him up anymore. Any other questions for Travis? Thank you, sir. I appreciate the board's time. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. All right. So to read the ordinance, we need the amount in this ordinance, correct? Yes. So we all have to decide on the amount that you want to put into this ordinance. So I recommend 15 minutes. Bond issue. That's about as high as I would like to It's up to you guys. Hey, girl. I personally would err on the side of caution and conservatism. So, as far as the scope of these projects, I mean, I certainly don't want to end up issuing $20 million, taking it out, but 
it's better to have it than not have it. It's better to have it in our pocket if we need it than to not run into halfway through a project to not be able to finish it because we can't we can't raise the funds. I see both sides and we have a piece of paper that says 18 million projects. <laughs> I too look at, we know all utilities unfortunately are going to be going up and how can we bear all of that to our end users, our citizens. We, we want to bring people in and not cause them to leave because utility bills are going too high. Uh, I would concur with Dolores. It's something we have to do, but maybe you go with the 15 million instead of 20. 15, 15, 20, what did you say? Easter negotiations. 18. You might have said that. That didn't help me. <laughs> the engineer report says 18. I can live with 18. I can live with 15, too. I don't care. I'll make a motion we go to 15 million. No, we got a motion for it. I'll second. A motion and second. All in favor, aye. 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 Say opposed. Fifteen is it. Now you may read the ordinance with fifteen. Bill number 2024-30, an ordinance calling an election on the sewerage system revenue bond question in Kernan, Missouri, and the voters will be asked to authorize the sum of fifteen million. I have a motion to approve the ordinance. And I'm sorry, just I think that when uh, Joey was here, we did clear but this is the ballot language that will be on the ballot. Correct. You're approving the exact ballot language. Okay. <coughs> Do I have a motion? Yes. I'll move. Motion's made. Do I have a second? Second. Motion's made. Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? <coughs> so carried. Uh, resolution. We got one twice to get on. Do <coughs> you like? I have, so, I have to certify the day of the next meeting. Oh, we, yes. I mean, you're right. We moved. Oh, we moved the meeting by a day. Because of Memorial Day. Yeah. Because of work, and maybe we can't do that. Um, I guess it doesn't. They don't have. We legally don't agree to any separate meetings. Correct. Okay. So since we moved the next meeting from Monday to Tuesday, um, and the certification for this ordinance, this mod has to be to the courthouse by uh, 4:30 p.m. on uh, Monday. Um, and we need to read it twice. On what? On the 28th. <laughs> on Memorial Day? Um, 27th is Memorial 20th. Day. Okay, so 28th is a Tuesday. Yeah. Excuse me, I should have done the Tuesday. Oh. Forgive me. So we're a few hours shy. <laughs> so you need to read it the second time. Yes. Is that what you're trying to say? That's what I'm trying to say. Would you read that the second time? Bill number 2024-30, an ordinance calling an election on a sewerage system revenue bond question in Herman, Missouri, asking voters to authorize up to $15 billion. I have a motion. Do I have a second? No, I mean, do I have a motion? I will motion to approve <laughs> bill number 2024-30 as second round. I have a motion now. Do I have a second? Second. Motion made and second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? This is okay. Now we move to resolution. The resolution that is on for this evening, number 1341, a resolution authorizing the issuance of space <coughs> permits for the MyFest Festival. We have a motion to approve the resolution. Can I have a discussion before we put it? Okay. If you would like, yeah. I won't vote for it, this resolution at all. <clears throat> on January the 9th of 2023, I asked the Board of Aldermen to consider changing <clears throat> the space permit requirements. Since then, I've met with the mayor of the city staff and <clears throat> to discuss the issue. <clears throat> Over the year, years plus, I have received information from the staff saying that they did not have time to consider my request. Uh, at that meeting, I did draft a sample ordinance that would eliminate the festival requirement altogether and just have a special special events ordinance. Uh, right now we have special events ordinances or applications and we have festivals. They are getting confused and sometimes 
not the right people are not getting the right applications, <clears throat> which I guess doesn't make any difference. But our staff is printing out space permits. Uh, for what reason? I have no clue. The information that's on the space permit can be easily obtained from the person who is having the web. And I guess uh, <clears throat> it's the space permits are only required for the MyFest and Oktoberfest. <clears throat> that's because in 1984 <clears throat> there was a need for it. I do not see a need for it at this time. I, I just, it, it's a waste of the way I look at it. City staff, <clears throat> I, I don't see it. So I, I am opposed and I will not vote for the resolution. Okay, you're not going to vote for it. Do I have a motion to approve the resolution? I'll move there first. Motion made and a second. I will second. Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. And she's the poll. Okay. All right, we uh, will move on to uh, motion. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes from our last meeting, please? I'll make a motion to approve the April 22nd, 2024 minutes. Motion is been made. Do I have a second? Second. Name and second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? So carry. Okay, we have the bills. Everybody's had an opportunity to look at the bills. Do I have a motion to pay our bills? I move that we pay those bills. Motion has been made. Do I have a second? I'll second. Motion made and second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? So carry. Reappoint Jeff Smith to Planning and Zoning Commission. Motion to approve, Jeff. I'll make motion to approve, reappoint Jeff Smith to the Planning and Zoning Commission. Motion's made. Do I have a second? I will second. Motion made and second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? So carried. <clears throat> uh, well, what's that name? Hire Lily Bogosang Zhu Zhou coming. <laughs> Grace Berkemeyer and Quinn Winkleman as lifeguards for 2024. Plus, we have. Oh, and we, we have. We do have two more. Uh, we have two more. And this brings us up to full staff. Uh, this is Grace Klesner and um, Quentin Beerman. If you could please add those to your motion, I would appreciate it. All right. They are added. Do I have a motion to approve the lifeguards so we can get a full one? So moved. Motion made. Do I have a second? Second. Motion made and second on paper. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So carried. Higher umpire and referees. Eric Williams for referee and Molly Shear for an umpire. Do I have a motion to approve them? Move to approve. Motion made, do I have a second? Second. Motion made, second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? So carried. Right. Approved a low bid from Schulte Supply Incorporated for $47,935.25 for the water main supplies. This is for the Schiller Street project in the future. Do I have a motion to approve that? So moved. Thank you. Second? Second. Motion made. Second. All paper, right? Aye. Any opposed? So carried. Additional use permit renewal for Tinker LLC Zydeco Outdoor Liquor Consumption. I think it's Zydeco. Pretty close. Pretty close. Okay. Hey, I'm not real good with, with my pronunciation. I'm sorry. Zydeco. Outdoor consu liquor consumption, 112 yeah, East yeah, 5th yeah, Street. It's, just, it's for an outdoor patio. <laughs> Do you have any questions about the music? Anybody have any questions? The police department hasn't had any problems. No, he's got a right. note in there. It's all good. Okay. If not, do I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Motion to make. Do I have a second? Second. Motion made and second. All in favor, right? Aye. Any opposed? So, Gary, you're good, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sorry for missing What a tough job you guys have. Conditional use permit renewal for the Missouri Trading Post Outdoor Liquor Consumption for 13 Market Street. And motion to approve. I make a motion to approve. Motion made. Do I have a second? 
Second. 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 All in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? So carried. Conditional use permit renewal for Doxy Slush Nicholas and Brittany Brentford Outdoor Liquor Consumption 222 East 1st Street. Do I have a motion to approve that? I will move to approve. Motion's made. Do I have a second? Second. Motion made and second. All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? So carried. Conditional use permit renewal for 108 East 13th Street LLC Zachary and Ashley Mick. Michael, owner of occupied guest house. I do have to say on this one that their their inspection is scheduled for this week. They probably meeting wasn't this week. So, so we approve it with the pending of the inspection being approved. Do I have a motion? I will move uh, to approve pending the uh, building inspection. Motion has been made. Do I have a second? Second. Motion made and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No parking issues with this. No, there were no issues, and I think they had a variance some time back for the public. They have put in some off the street parking lots. Have they? Mm -hmm. I haven't seen, I haven't been by this place in a while. There were two spots right off the 13th Street. Right. Okay. Conditional use permit renewal for the concert hall barrel, Alex Timmy, outdoor liquor consumption, 206 East 1st Street. Do I have a motion to approve that one? I'll move to approve. Motion made. Do I have a second? Second. Motion made and second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? Those carry. Festival event application for the Herman J.C.'s Oktoberfest Beer Garden, Sesquicentennial Park, October 4, 5, 12, 19th, and 26, 2024. Do I have a motion to approve? Make a motion to approve. Motion made. Do I have a second? Second. Motion made and Seconded. All in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? So carries. Festival and application for the Herman J.C.'s Night Fest Beer Garden, Sesquicentennial Park, May 17th and 18th, 2024. Mm -hmm. Motion to approve that. Motion made. Second. Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? So carried. Festival event application, Arts Council Heritage Craft Exhibition 304 Gutenberg, May 18, 2024. Motion to approve. Move to approve. Motion made. Do I have a second? Second. Motion made and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So okay. Festival event application, White House Hotel, Public House Brewing Company, Food Catering 232 Wharf Street, May 18, 2024. And a motion to approve that. And this is just on their, side their property. Of the property. Yeah, they usually do it within that fenced area there. Yeah. Actually, they do it on the first street side, but the address is where. Have, have they so done food there before? Or is yeah, they're yeah, there every year. Do okay, I have a motion to approve that? So moved. Motion made. Do I have a second? Second. On favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? So carried. Yes, we have some reports. <coughs> we need to go into closed session. <laughs> I move we go into closed session for the purpose of dealing with matters relating to legal actions, causes of action, or litigation 610.021, and discussion related to negotiations for a contract pursuant to section 610.021 of revised statutes of Missouri. Thank you, everyone. We have a motion to have a second. Good night. Okay, second. How are you? Got a second? Yeah, nice to meet you. We have to vote for the. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Aye. Aye. We are now in closed session. Take a short break. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, guys. Thank you. No Appreciate Thank you. you. Water from this place. That's alcohol.